The Sleep Foundation, a One Care Media company, reports that sleep disorders are conditions that affect sleep quality, timing, duration, and impact a person's ability to properly function while they are awake. These disorders can undermine quality of life and contribute to their medical problems. Most sleep disorders can be characterized by one or more of the following four signs. Trouble falling or remaining asleep. Difficulty staying awake during the day. Sleep-wake cycle imbalances that interfere with a healthy sleep schedule. And unusual behaviors during sleep. Any of these signs could indicate a sleep disorder. People who experience issues with sleep or daytime energy should consult with their doctor. The five most common sleep disorders, and there's, there's several, but the five most common is insomnia, sleep apnea, narcolepsy, restless leg syndrome, and parasomnia. These are the five most common. Sleep disorders can raise your chances of experiencing high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, and obesity. Sleep deprivation also can decrease work performance and alertness, decrease memory and cognitive ability, reduce the quality of life, and increase your chances of injury. Sleep deprivation. Now, in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 24, listen to what he said. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down, and your sleep will be sweet. Your sleep will be sweet. Let's call this sweet dreams. Pray with me. Father, bless the reading of your word. I do pray for deliverance today, healing. Let your anointing move in this room and set your people free. We pray it in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. I listened to, I, I, I listed for you the five most common sleep disorders, but I, I just want to focus on three. Three troubling sleep disorders. Insomnia. Insomnia is characterized by an ongoing difficulty to fall or remain asleep. Chronic insomnia is diagnosed when someone has these symptoms at least three times per week for at least three months. Now, the things that can cause this, stress, travel or work schedule, poor sleep habits, Diet, caffeine, nicotine, alcohol, medications, or medical conditions. Insomnia. Listen to what Jesus said in Luke chapter 10 and verse 41. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you're anxious and you're troubled about many things. Insomnia. Now I know that there can be uh, a medical condition I know that there can be other factors contributing to this sleep disorder. But in so many cases, it's caused, it's agitated by stress. He said to Martha, Jesus speaking, Martha, you're, you're anxious and you're troubled about a lot of things. The Bible is very clear that we're to take our cares and to cast them upon him. Jesus said in what, uh, John chapter 14, he said, let not your hearts be troubled. People are troubled today. There are people in this room and watching online that are troubled. Troubled by things that are happening here in the States, rather it's with government, rather it's with uh, economics, rather it's with uh, some of the social ills that we're dealing with in our community. There's a host of things, the war in the Ukraine. There's things that are happening around the world and people are troubled. And that trouble can 
can get on the inside and create a, a sleep disorder. As we've said many times, boats only sink when the trouble on the outside gets on the inside. And when we internalize these things, we begin to get troubled and our sleep can be interrupted. Stress. I read years ago that 80% of visits to the doctor are created, they start with stress. Stress is a horrible thing. It's, it's alarming what stress does to the human body and how that it wears you down. And then when you go to bed at night, the problem we have is we can't shut our minds off because we lay in bed staring at the ceiling trying to work out the issues of the day, trying to resolve the problems of the day, trying to find solutions to the challenges that we face. And it, it weighs upon us and our sleep gets disturbed, stress. These external circumstances that become an internal problem, stress. So let me ask you this question. Your body may, lay, may lie down at night, but your soul is up and walking about. So let me ask you, what is troubling you? Your body may lay down, but your soul is up walking about, trying to resolve the issues, trying to find solutions, trying to work through things, worried about your children, worried about your grandchildren, worried about your business, Worried, worried, worry. And people lay down at night. Their bodies lie down, but their soul doesn't rest. And so you have to pause today and ask the question, what is troubling you? What is it that troubles you? What is it that's, that's laying on your mind and that's creating a sleep disorder? The second disorder that I want to mention, narcolepsy. Narcolepsy is a sleep disorder that makes people very drowsy during the day. People with narcolepsy find it hard to stay awake for long periods of time. They fall asleep suddenly. Causes, narcolepsy is a lifelong condition for which doctors say there is no cure. Medicines and lifestyle changes can help manage, though, the, the symptoms. Now, listen, there are some times, there are some times when people get sick because people get sick. Our body is aging and it begins to break down. It's called iniquity that's in the bloodline. Iniquity, it's in the blood. That's why so many things are genetic, like diabetes can be, gen, uh, can be hereditary. Genetics passed down from one generation to the next. The blood is tainted. We know that. And so sometimes people get sick because people get sick. But sometimes there's spiritual activity that's involved as with the woman that was bent over for 18 years because of a spirit of infirmity. There are times when there's a spirit of infirmity and the enemy comes to attack. And we know that. The scriptures make that very clear. And so there are times when people have this sleep disorder and it's a physical thing. But I'm here this morning to talk to you about spiritual matters. And as with insomnia, there can be stress and there can be a spirit of trouble. The enemy wants to come to trouble you, okay? There can also be spiritual activity when it comes to this sleep disorder. Listen to what the Bible says in... Uh, Romans chapter 11, just as, as it is written, God has given them a spirit of stupor. Now the word stupor here in the Greek means severe sorrow, extreme grief, lethargic, lethargic of mind and of soul. Now think about that. You've heard me say before, as I'm, I'm in and out among people, I, I look at people, um, I oftentimes will, will look in their eyes and it's like the candle of their soul has gone out. It's like they're in a stupor. They're, they're going through the motions of living, but there's no life there. 
there's a stupor that's come over them. A spirit of, of a stupor or slumber has come over them. And so let me ask you this question. Your body is going through the mechanics of living, but your soul is in a stupor or a coma, a coma. So what happened to you? The first question was, what is troubling you? But the second question is, what has happened to you? Your soul is in a stupor. Your soul is in a coma. There's, there's, there's a cloud over your life. I've watched people in my ministry. I've watched for years when so much becomes too much, where they go through things. They go through tragedy and heartache and heartbreak, one storm after another. And suddenly their soul begins to just wither and they, they begin to lose their personality, okay, to the problem that they're dealing with. I've seen it where people's soul comes under a stupor, comes under this coma, and people are just going through the mechanics of living, but they're not really living. And so I want to ask that question on campus and those online, what happened to you? What tragedy, what event, what heartache, what heartbreak, what happened to you to cause you to come under this stupor where you're just letting life happen to you instead of you making life happen for you? Instead of getting up and being intentional and deliberate with life, where you get up every day and you say, this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice. But instead, there's a stupor. Listen, there's a stupor that gets on people. They get up, they go to work, they go home, they change clothes, they carry out, they sit on their couch, they turn the lights down, and they get lost in, a, in, in, they get lost in, in, in the television. They get lost in watching other people live their lives instead of them living their own. Just lost, a stupor. And then they get up the next morning and they go to work again. They're... They're existing, but they're not really living. They're not really living life. They're really not living to the fullness that God intended for them. There's a spirit of a stupor over them. Romans, he said, he released that spirit of stupor. It came over them. So what has happened to you? And I say that from a heavy heart because I look at people and they've gone through a tragedy. They've gone through an event They've gone through heartache, heartbreak, disappointment, and suddenly they just fall back in that melancholy spirit and that stupor comes over them. And they're going through the mechanics of life, but they're not really living. The third one, parasomnia, parasomnia, excuse me, parasomnia, parasomnia is a type of disturbing disorder that can happen just before you fall asleep, while you are sleeping or as you are waking up. Now, there, there, are, different, there are different types, but I'm only gonna mention just, just four of them. I'm trying to find you out here. I'm trying to identify where you are. And I'm gonna pray for you. These four types, number one, nightmares. Nightmares are vivid dreams that can cause fear, terror, and anxiety. Night terrors. Now, night terrors typically happens with children. It doesn't happen very often with adults, but it can, but primarily is with children. Night terrors are a nightmare episode where the person appears to be awake, but have no or little memory of the event the next morning. Some of you parents have witnessed night terrors with your children. Another one is sleepwalking. Sleepwalking involves getting up and walking around while in a state of sleep. The last one I want to mention is teeth grinding, is when you grind or you clench your teeth severely while you sleep. Listen to 1 Samuel chapter 16, talking about Saul. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. The first one I asked you, what is it that's troubling you? The second one, I asked the question of what happened to you. Listen to this third one. Your body is sleeping at night, but your spirit is troubled. But I want to ask you, 
have you perhaps opened a portal in your home? Have you opened up a portal, a gateway? Have you created this portal in your home? Because the Bible makes it very clear that a distressing spirit came to Saul and it troubled him. Have, have you opened a portal in your home? You can do this. I've seen it. I'm not telling you I understand all things when it comes to the spiritual realm, but I'm telling you with 40 years of full-time ministry, I've seen it where a father or mother would open a portal in their home through television, through the media, through their internet. They open up a gateway and there's, there's that, that distressing spirit that comes into that home. You need to be careful. You know, I watch it with my grandbabies sometimes. I've got six grandkids. Some are more sensitive than others. That's just the way humans are. Some are very sensitive to their environment. And there are times when something can come on a television or music. And there's, there's some of my grandkids, they will pull back from that. And they'll say, they'll say, turn that off. They'll say, cut that off. Change that channel. Turn that music off. I've seen it. I've had it happen more than once where they say, stop that. I don't, they're so sensitive. They're so sensitive. We've been so protective over our kids that whenever there is something that's, that's unrighteous or vile or dark, their little spirits rise up and say, turn that off, turn that. Listen, I've seen it with people uh, where oftentimes they do it through ignorance or they can do it through a bondage and addiction where they open up a gateway, a portal in their home where that corruption comes into that home, a distressing spirit. It said that Saul was under that distressing spirit. And so you have to ask the question. I'm not here this morning to, to bring condemnation on anyone. I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. And, and Genesis chapter four, you remember Cain killing Abel. God said to Cain, don't you know if you do what's right, it will go well with you. But if you don't, demons are crouching at your door. Demons are crouching at your door. God told him, he says, look, you've got to realize that the enemy is an opportunist and he's waiting for you to crack that door. That's why you have to be so careful what you bring into your home through the internet. Guys, listen to me. When you open your home up to pornography, you don't realize the spirit that you're, you're, you're bringing into that home and how that, that can impact your kids. I've seen it through the years where a daddy was in pornography for years and nobody knew it, but later in life it came out. And then it came out after that, that his son was in pornography too. And he didn't know that, but he opened that doorway into his home, that portal and that distressing spirit came in and it, and it got a hold of that boy when he was just a teenager. We have to be careful. You say, pastor, you're trying to scare me. Yeah, I'm trying to get your attention because you need to pay attention. You need to be careful. Listen, I'm amazed right now, and I don't watch this stuff, but I come across it, I see it, I see it on television. I'm amazed that, it, that right now, America seems to be fascinated with witches. What's all these witches we got, these shows coming up, these series, this witch and that witch. Listen, you say, well, that's harmless. You better cut that out. You better turn that mess off. Now you need to listen to me. You need to turn that mess off. I love you enough to tell you the truth. I, ca I care about you, but you need to turn that mess off. Listen, you need to be careful what you let your kids watch. You need to be careful what, what games you let them play. You need to be careful what videos and media they get into, what music they listen to. Listen, the music these kids have nowadays, talking about fornication, talking about other things sexual that I can't mention here in, in, in a mixed crowd, the music, the lyrics, the wording, that stuff that's getting into their little spirits, those movies that are getting into their spirits, parents don't even realize that they're opening up gateways. They're opening up portals in their homes and hell is vomiting this mess into their home. You need to realize that. So my point being, sometimes nightmares are nightmares. Sometimes night terrors are just night terrors. Kids can have them. It's just, it's just, it can be a, a, a physical 
condition. Sometimes things just happen because things happen. But sometimes it happens because there's a spirit that comes into that house. There's a darkness that's being let in. That's why I, I harp on it so much. And, I, and I, I'm so sorry, to, I, but I, I harp on it so much about in your home, getting in your home and just praying over your house, praying over your house and just guarding, putting the blood over the doorpost and setting a guard at your house and being as, as careful as you can about television and the internet and just being so careful with what you allow into your home. You need to guard your house. You need to guard your family. You need to be careful and watch over that. And you call that old fashioned, you call it antiquated, you call it whatever you wanna call it, but I'm still gonna get up in the morning, I'm still gonna get up at night, I'm still gonna get up here in the day, I'm gonna pray over my house, I'm gonna declare the sanctuary, I'm gonna worship God, I'm gonna put the blood on the doorpost, I'm gonna ask God if I've done anything to grieve him, to please forgive me, I'm gonna welcome Holy Spirit, I'm gonna lay claim to my family, I'm gonna fight for my children, I'm gonna fight for my grandchildren, I'm gonna fight for my church, I'm gonna fight for my my congregation. I'm going to stand in this sanctuary. I'm going to pray. I'm going to repent. I'm going to declare we're people of a pure heart and clean hands. I'm going to put the blood over the doorpost and I'm going to stand between you and hell and say not here, not now, not on my watch, not with my people. I won't tolerate it. I won't allow it. I won't allow it. Won't allow it. We have to look at our lives and how people are being so disturbed in their sleep. Sometimes it's just life, I get it. Sometimes you have to ask the question, have I cracked a window, cracked a door, created a portal? Have I given the enemy a legal right to come into my home? And that's a whole nother message we preached years ago talking about the thief that comes to steal, to kill and destroy. Sometimes he comes in and he doesn't have a legal right to come in and that's when you bow up on him and you take authority and you bind him and you deal with him. But there are sometimes we give him legal right, legal entry into our homes because of the foolishness that we allow into our houses, into our homes. So you've got to be so careful. You got to pay attention and you got to watch because there are times, there are times when it's more than just life, but it's a spirit. I remember when we were raising Justin and Amy, I, I, I haven't slept since they were kids. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I've been awake. I've just, I've, I haven't slept the last 40 years. I have just, you know, just, it created in me, I, I was just a light sleeper. And I remember, for example, I've had different things happen in my home as you have, but I remember one night I, I woke up and I felt, I, felt, I felt darkness in the house. I felt the spirit of darkness. And I've done that before where I woke up and I saw oh, it's just you and I went back to sleep, full with him. It's full, don't fool with him. But this night I woke up and I felt oppression in the house and suddenly I heard Justin cry out. He was having a nightmare. And so I, I got out of bed. I said, I'm not having that. I'm not going to do that. And I got out of bed and I went in there and began to pray over my house until I felt that darkness leave my home. You see, you, you've got to pay attention. Sometimes kids are going to have nightmares because kids have nightmares. But sometimes kids have nightmares and night terrors because of spiritual activity, as was Saul that came in to distress him because Saul opened a door, a gateway. And so I'm not trying to make you fearful. The Bible said though, to Paul said to Timothy, rebuke with all, with all authority. That's a choice that you have to make. Power is a matter of grace and you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. But authority is a choice you make. And when you sense that there's oppression, when you sense that there's darkness, the enemy will come. The enemy will come. 
You have to get up and you have to position yourself between, you, between hell and your family and says, not here, not now, not with me, not on my watch. You're not doing this. And then you just have to make sure that there's no portal. There's no gateway. You, you, watching, you watching a series on television. Like I mentioned earlier, we're fascinated with witches right now. And, and I don't know what that's doing to our nation. Witches. You need to cut that off. You need to cut that out. And you need to see it for what it is. It's not harmless. Some of this stuff is not harmless and you've got to pay attention. So your body is sleeping at night, but your spirit's troubled. So what portal have you created in your home? Let me talk to you for just a minute about the gift of sleep. Psalms chapter four and verse eight, the psalmist said, now because of you, Lord, I will lie down in peace and sleep comes at once. For no matter what happens, I will live unafraid. Sleep foundation again said, while sleeping, the body performs a number of repairing and maintaining processes that affect nearly every part of the body. As a result, a good night's sleep or a lack of sleep can impact the body both mentally and physically. Listen to seven healthy habits of sleep. Improve mood, healthy heart, regulated blood sugar, improved mental function, restored immune system, stress relief, healthy weight. It impacts you. The CDC said this, according to the CDC, 70 million American adults are chronically sleep deprived. 70 million. Gallup, in 2022 Gallup survey, only 32% of Americans said they got excellent or, or very good sleep. 35% described their sleep as good. 33% said their sleep was fair or poor. Okay? Listen to Daniel 7. Now we're going to shift to the, what can be spiritual. He shall speak words against the Most High, talking about the enemy, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Wear are you out? The enemy wants God's people exhausted, anxious, disoriented, sickly, and inactive. Luke 22. You could have seized me, Jesus speaking, at any time in the Garden of Gethsemane. But in the darkness of night, you have now found your time. For it belongs to you and the prince of darkness. Now, I don't understand everything. But it's obvious that the enemy likes to move in dry places and in dark places. The Bible makes it clear. He likes to move in dry places. He likes to move in dark places, in death. And so it's no wonder that at night so often is when people deal with oppression, depression, the enemy comes. There's no doubt. I mean, there's no, there's no wonder that nightmares, night terrors, a night terror. Have you ever seen a night terror? It's horrible. The child will, will wake up from sleep, but they're not awake. It's like sleepwalking in a nightmare. Their eyes are open. The eye, I think they're dilated though. There's that blank look on their face. They're screaming, they're crying. You have to hold them sometimes so they won't harm themselves. They can be up, they're awake, but yet they're not awake. It's like sleepwalking. And then after they come out of it, you'll, their facial expression will change and suddenly they come out of it, but they don't remember what they just did. A night terror. And as I mentioned earlier, sometimes things happen because things happen, but sometimes it's because the enemy comes in he wants to torment a family. He wants to rob families, rob Christians of their sleep. He wants you exhausted. He wants you anxious. He wants you uh, uh, war slap out. He wants to wear you down, as Daniel said, to wear down the saints of God. He wants your mind troubled. He wants your soul troubled. He wants your body to lay down at night and go to sleep, but your soul is up walking around because you're troubled, you're fighting. You wake up in the morning and the sheets are all just, it's like you've been in a wrestling match all night long. You get up, you're not peaceful, you're not restful, you're not, you're not sleeping. The enemy wants you exhausted. He doesn't want you to be your best. He doesn't want you to be alert and to live your life. The, he said to him, you have found your time. Listen, demons don't sleep. But we can, we should, and we must because it's a gift from God. And you need to know that again. Psalms chapter four and verse eight. I will lie down in peace and sleep comes at once. For no matter what happens, I will live unafraid. Listen, God wants you to lay down at night. He wants you to lay back. 
He wants your, your body to, to, be, to be rested. He wants your mind to be in peace. And he wants your soul to lie down and rest. God wants his people rested. Listen to me. I, I know that's a simple statement, but it's profound. You need to see sleep as a gift. You need to see sleep, uh, sleep as a gift. There are times that I've laid down in my bed and I've quoted that scripture, you give your servant peaceful sleep. And I declare that over myself. Now, I don't always get it. I'm just like you. There are nights when I'm fretful. There are nights when I can't sleep and I get up. There are nights when things come to trouble me and I get up and pray. There are times when this, like yesterday I mentioned, 3.30, 3.40 in the morning, I had a dream about night terrors. And I woke up and I felt like I needed to get up, that God was trying to maybe speak to me about you. And I got up and I began to research and I began to seek this thing and go in this direction and just, God, what are you wanting to say? What do you want me to say to your people? And so I'm in prayer yesterday. God talked to me. What is it? And I realized that there are people in this church that it may be your children. It may be you. It may be just physical condition or it may be a spiritual thing. But either way, you need to realize that gift is asleep. And we need to start declaring that. And we need to lay hold of that. And we need to claim that and say, that's mine. And I'm going to sleep. I'm not going to be afraid. Fear is a horrible thing. Fear is so tormenting to lay in bed at night and to look, to stare at your ceiling. And you're trying to resolve all the issues with your family, with your kids, your grandkids. You're trying to work out everything. You're, it's going over and over in your mind. How many times have I done that? How many times have you done that? Where you made, I'm not talking about anything immoral, but you just, you made a mistake. You, you made a bad decision or you, 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 you didn't handle something as well as you could have. And you said something, perhaps you hurt somebody's feelings or, and you lay in bed and you play that over and over and over in your mind. You take that tape recorder and you back it up and you play it and then you back it up and you play it and then you back it up and you think if only I said this if only I wouldn't have said that if only i had done this if only i had done that and we play that thing like a movie screen on, on the ceiling of our bedrooms we sit there and we if only I would have done this if only I would have done that if only regrets 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 and it's at night when demons don't sleep it seems in the darkness they come to torment God's people and you wake up in the morning and you're exhausted. And you wore slap out because your body lied down, but your soul never did. Your mind never would stop turning off the mind, getting the mind to shut down. And that's why God's people need to wake up to the scriptures and realize that sleep is a gift to renew the body, to renew the mind. I mentioned it to you earlier, the impact a sleepless night has on the human body, how horrible it is. But how if you do sleep well, it builds up your immune system. It just restores, it's restorative. And here's the thing that everyone in this room needs to hear and online. Everyone in this room, I don't care if you're black, white, brown, male, female, short, tall, doesn't matter. We all have one thing in common. We all need to sleep. And sleep is a gift from God. A gift. Stephen, come help me. In Psalms chapter 77 and verse 4, he said, I'm awake all night. Not a wink of sleep. I can't even say what's bothering me. Wow. Three troubling sleep disorders. Insomnia. I want to ask you the question. What's bothering you? What are you troubled about? Narcolepsy. What tragedy has happened to you? Where that spirit of stupor has come over you. And you're just going through the mechanics of life, but you're not really living. There's a coma that's come over your soul. What happened to you? 
parasomnia. What portal perhaps have you created in your home to where the enemy can slip in and distress your family? Proverbs 3, 24, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. So my prayer for you is that you lie down in peace and you experience sweet dreams.